studying in China is not easy. It is a challenge, so eh, I don't know what I was thinking, but I did. I did. <laughs> what is your advice for those who are interested in potentially studying, not just here in China, but abroad? What is your advice for them? so many ways just like with people who have been so kind to me hey guys I'm here with my good friend mr. Isaac Banda <laughs> <laughs> and we're here at 798 art zone district in Beijing China and I'm really lucky because this guy over here is always very very busy so I'm glad that he's able to join me and um, yeah, as we talk about his life here in China. So, Mr. Isaac, thank you so much for joining. I'm so happy to be here. My first time in this place, 798. I don't know where I've been, but here I am. Yeah, thank you for bringing me here. <laughs> so I wanted to find out a little bit more about his story. So mm. Isaac, first of all, where are you from? Where did you grow up? Yeah. And yeah, tell us yeah. so as you said, my name is Isaac and I come from Malawi. The best country in the world, also known as the warm heart of Africa because of its warm people. Yeah. So I was born over there I'm in a town called uh, Plantire. Mm -hmm. I was raised there and then when I was eight years old we went to Zambia. Uh, so I was actually raised up in Zambia pretty much. I spent over 12 years in Zambia, went to school there and all my friends right now are from Zambia. And so I'm very much Zambian at heart. So how did you find the opportunity to study in China? So you know last year of high school and everybody in class is you know saying that i want to go to the uk or i want to go to the us i want to go to australia at that point in time china is on nobody's mind at, at all right and so you know i was just also saying that okay you know i'd love to maybe apply to the uk as well like i had a strong um, interest in the uk however you know just just school fees and and life um, over there i found is very very expensive if you're an international student and so like really out of the blue, like my dad, he had like all of these interactions with the Chinese embassy in Zambia. He used to work with them, organize events with them. And then like through time, like he ended up being friends with the uh, Chinese um, education officer. And then like he told my dad about these um, amazing uh, uh, opportunities to apply to China on a scholarship, a full scholarship to study here. And so it was perfect timing that, oh, okay, you know, He's like, I have a son in high school in his last year, you know, maybe he could just try it out and see what happens. And so I did. And how did you get your scholarship? What were the requirements uh, to be able to study here in China? Yeah, so one key phrase, China Scholarship Council. So they are, um, I guess, the uh, organization based in China who are pretty much um, responsible for offering these like scholarships to students from all over the world. And so I guess that council with the um, Chinese um, embassy back home, I was able to apply online www.csc.edu.cn. So um, create an <laughs> online account and then um, so the embassy has like this agency um, number uh, you have to use on that um, online application. So after you have an account on the online application website. system website, you apply so like, you just apply with your you know igcse grades and awards you've, you've yeah. had in the past and all that kind of stuff after the online application is done you are called back to to have an interview at the embassy you have an interview with the uh, education officer there just i'm um, speaking to him and, yeah. and all that kind of stuff and then um yeah i guess that 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 whole process takes about you know from january up to about april end of april and then if all goes well you yeah, you um, are offered a place in China and you and you, um, yeah, arrive here in like end August. What yeah. was the first thing you wanted to do when you got here? So I have the craziest story. So the day of my flight to China, I had a bad toe injury. Like imagine the, the sink fell on my toe oh, no. and it crushed my toe, removed my toenail. The day, the day of the flight is like <laughs> at 8 o'clock in the morning. Flight is at 12 p.m. And How so, right? <laughs> I, 
I don't know how that happened. It was the most weird, random thing ever. And so I got here, um, arrived at school, and then I was like, okay, where's the hospital at? Let's go. So you went straight <laughs> like, to the hospital. That was the first thing you did. Arrived in my room, like, okay, let's go to the hospital and find the hospital. So speaking no Mandarin, no Chinese, went yeah. to a local <laughs> hospital. hospital. On campus, yeah. Well, on campus. No campus, yeah. Oh, on campus, okay. On campus, on campus. Facebook English, right? No, no. But, but I was blessed that I had a friend um, who helped me so much like he was in China for like four years before I came here so he helped me so much and he could speak excellent Chinese and so like yeah we um, yeah went to the hospital together he helped me through a lot so yeah. So first year of university was actually about learning Chinese learning Chinese language yeah oh, the whole year the whole year so it was dedicated to that that was yeah. part of the program it was yeah part of the program it was an intensive course of Chinese language every day just learning um, reading writing and speaking reading writing and speaking every day and that was one compulsory. year you didn't really it was compulsory yes yeah, compulsory that's, that's pretty good then actually. yeah it was really good yeah it was really good and then your actual course which started in the second year you yep. were here it was actually a chinese course yeah. right <laughs> yeah. the course was all in chinese chinese taught course that's right yeah and what was that like that's what it Among was your chinese local <laughs> peers yeah. Right, so you had international students in the same in in the same class <laughs> as a local Chinese student. So And your and your teacher was We're treated equally. Yeah. We're treated equally. They're like, okay, Chinese and national students, like you're all students <laughs> at the end of the day. Economic students learning in Chinese. That's it. So and you so did ec you're doing economics. I am doing economics, yeah. Yeah, I'm doing economics, studying in Chinese. So it, it was yeah, very difficult challenge, very yeah. difficult experience, crazy. Like I I don't I don't imagine like what I was thinking <laughs> saying yes to learning economics in Chinese but you know what here I am fourth year now so <laughs> it's going quite well <laughs> I'm almost done but yeah very stretching challenging experience it's um, learning and studying and just being taught in a second language really and yeah. Chinese Mandarin <laughs> out of all languages yeah so 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 thank God that for economics right the original kind of um, economics research is all in English like okay. the um, original economics thinkers were all Englishmen Adam Smith and, and Keynes and, and, and all these people so like we actually use lots of English, English. books and resources oh, okay. however things are taught in Chinese and so for me like that helps me so much because I can read in English right I right. can actually read alone in the library in my room I can yeah. just read some stuff try and understand a lot of things and then enter into a class and then just, just like try to like see if I can actually stay up with just how fast yeah, they they again. speak in Chinese like things go really yeah. quickly you know in a fast blur yeah. and so like you have to be alert you shouldn't be tired or <laughs> sleepy because like you're gonna miss a mountain of just like things in class and yeah. so you got to be sharp all the time you got to be hearing you got to be um, writing notes yeah. Chinese or English I usually like write everything in English yeah. because man there's this like um word up on the screen I'm like okay what is that word in English look it up on my phone and then okay okay it's that thing and then I'm uh, writing in my notes or even like if it's in uh, English I'm like okay I have to learn how to say that in Chinese yeah. look it up on my phone and then so yeah. like yeah it's like extra work extra for us work, um, yeah. as uh, international students of like having to yeah um, work through language as an aspect and also just like trying to learn economics yeah, too at the same time too. describe to us a day in the life of a student here in China here is my worst day right <laughs> the worst day would start at about eight o'clock in the morning yeah. class at eight and then so so from eight o'clock up to 9 30 I yeah. have a class and then from 9 50 to 12 15 I have another class and then lunch from about 12 15 to to 1 o'clock ish and yeah. then 1 30 to 4 5 I have another class that's one whole class from one it's to two, four, one big class and then um I have like um evening time of just kind of um, chilling a little bit resting and then I have a last class from 6 30 up to 8 5 it's, and deadlines uh, it's pretty tough. Is pretty sick, deadlines. Sick, yeah. We have like homework assignments every day. Every day. <laughs> pretty, pretty much every day. So, yeah. And extra like, reading, I guess. Extra material. reading to do. Yeah. Studying as well. So it's always busy. Always a library. On always on the go. And um, yeah, it's good yeah. stuff though. What has been the funniest uh, moment so far or experience you've gone through here as a student? Yeah, as a student, the funniest experience I had was actually during my first week in China. So 
um, you know, I had that toe injury, right? And so, you know, the, the crazy things that I arrived in China when I was actually under 18 um, years old, so I was young, right? Yeah. So um, I required like some, some letter at our embassy, like to, to authorize, you know, that I was young and, you know, all that kind of stuff. And so, you know, I was fairly new in China. I didn't know how to use the subway. I didn't know how to use the bus, how to order a taxi. And so, so I rode a bicycle from school all the way <laughs> up to our embassy with an injured toe <laughs> because I had no other choice. Yeah. And like, it's crazy. I mean, I mean like, well, Isaac, ask around people, <laughs> like ask how to use a taxi. I didn't know how to speak Chinese. And so I was just like, you know what? I'll keep it easy and real, ride a bike. And then the crazy thing is that like at that time, like um, I had no app on like, you know, how to open, you know, like no. bicycles uh, outside. Public bike shares, yeah. So I was just like, you know what? I will, I will be outside and that if I'm lucky, I will find a bike open up already. No. And I did. So it was crazy. I was just like going out in faith. I was yes. like, all right, all right, here we go. Let's go to the embassy. And so, Rode it back to the embassy, one and a half hour ride. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. I was ah, man, I don't know what I was thinking, but Life of a student. I did. I did. <laughs> there and back. Yeah. So, Isaac, what are the things people should know about studying here in China? And even not just as an international student, but even as a student on a scholarship mm. program? You know, you have to know that um, studying in China is not easy, it is a challenge. So, you should expect that it's a big stretch in your life obviously like learning in this new environment new culture and when you got here did you go through any culture shocks did you experience anything like that yeah yeah personally like you know just even from food for example just the food is completely different from, from back, back home. home and so i was just like okay i don't know what to eat like i used to like end up being hungry at times i'm like oh man i, I don't know what to eat i don't i don't trust this food which was a bad attitude because now I love Chinese food. Yeah, so like that is a thing. And, and also if you're um, a person who's quiet like me, yeah. it's always hard to find like friends and to, and to go out there and to you know, find friends, yeah. make friends. And so like you end up kind of like being isolated a lot, being alone. You're like, um, I can't speak Chinese. I don't know how to talk to these people. So like you end up being quite lonely and, and yeah, you know, it's hard at times, sure. And how yeah. did you get through that? What? Yeah. yeah, give us some tips for yeah. that. Yeah. I'm sure you're not the only student um, who's gone through that. What has helped you? Yeah. Yeah. Everything changed when I heard about the Beijing International Christian Fellowship, BICF. Really, like, I just went there, found friends, met friends who are so close right now. Like, they are, like, my best friends ever. You know, like like Sandy and Naomi and Nastia and all, all of these people, Ryan, TJ. I met people at church who were so happy to just um, welcome me in yeah. and to um, help me out if I was in need, to um, help me with resources and advice and just lots life of in life in general, yeah, life yeah. in general. I have, I have um, people yeah. uh, who actually see me, care about me. And yeah, we do so, care about you. Yeah, yeah. Oh, thank yeah, you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I agree with you. Finding the community, yeah. and, uh, whether for you it's church or maybe it's a hobby or a passion outside of work, is really important. Yeah. For example, here in China, there's a big foreign uh, international community, and yeah. you know, we have things like WeChat where we can find groups and people yeah. that have the same sort of passions and likes and stuff. So it's yeah. really important. That's definitely, definitely. something that yeah. we need to take note if you ever think about. Uh, studying or working and living abroad and you've been a student here for five years and you've gone through the whole COVID experience still kind of going through it now what has that experience been like yeah. as a student here in China for us in China uh, we also had a hard time lockdown staying inside wearing masks if you're outside staying inside as often as you can as well so like it was quite tough like online classes staring at a screen the whole day all week all month but um i had a lot of friends who were like man guys we are in this together so let's just be we praying together choice. we don't have so a choice but we're in this together <laughs> and so let's get through this together what is your advice for those who are interested in potentially studying not just here in china but abroad what is your advice for them the main advice i'll give them is that you know you should try to find people who are in that place you're 
applying to. So if you have a friend, for example, if you have a friend of a friend, if you have an uncle or an aunt who or stays there, a or a cousin of a cousin <laughs> of an uncle, whatever, but like find a person who is there because they will help you just to find about banks and, and phone numbers and SIM cards and all this kind of stuff. A hospital, where's the hospital? Or like if it's in a place where like you don't know um, anything about the language there. Yeah. Researching about schools as well. So, you know, which school would you like um, yeah. to apply to? And, you know, go to, major to study, learning about like the subway, transport systems, the bus, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I think it's um, like it's pretty important. similar to how you would research a university, even if it was a university at home in your home country. Yeah. It's probably the same that, but even more. <laughs> yeah, right. Really, you probably double that, thing. just because you're, you're moving away from what you know already, Yeah. I, I, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's definitely a lot more thorough research. Mm -hmm. And what is your advice for those who are specifically looking for a scholarship mm. in China? If you are actually interested in China, you know, make a um, appointment at the embassy to ask around the um, the education officer who's there ask them about China if they um, actually help you with um, with CSC yeah. applications and so and in Zambia yeah yeah essential. requirements and all that kind of stuff in Zambia they actually do and so like you know it's a lot easier if you uh, work through the yeah, embassy officer. embassy okay. helps you to um, open an account online mm -hmm. and then it's a lot faster and smoother in, in that way. It's Thank blessing. you, Isaac. And yeah, one so more good to be thing, here. Obviously, so Isaac is a very talented young man, <laughs> and he is a musician slash composer slash everything <laughs> under music. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so uh, we need to hear you play. Woo! Yeah. 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 Let's do it. Let's, Let's do, do it. it. bird up in the sky liberated from the weight of time I've a million different songs this space cannot contain them all look for me you find me in the mountains call my name I'll be floating on the oceans come find me I'll be basking in the bright yellow sun I will journey high and low I will rise and I will fall We are going to climb a mountain <laughs> Isaac challenged himself Yeah, so apparently I look like an old man <laughs> I'm a pilgrim in this land I'm a bird up in the sky Liberated from the weight of time 